And Polly seems to have these really strong expectations for the Bears. And I, I really want to divulge into this. I love diving into my philosophy of football and my expectations as a fan because me and my co-host David have talked about this at nauseum. And so I, even recently I was on a channel. I like to hop on there and even talk uh, just general NFL with them. And his co-host is a, a Dallas fan. He's like, well, we got three 12 win seasons in a row, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you're in the same spot we are. You don't understand. It's everybody against Patrick Mahomes right now. Like, and, and so for me, like, I do have high expectations. I have very high expectations to be satisfied for my team. And it is Super Bowl or bust. However, I will appreciate the steps along the way. But yeah, man, I, I want to be on top in this league. And, and that's, you know, my, my second te uh, favorite team has uh, has been the Patriots. Just because they've over the last two decades, they've been able to set the example for what you can do in this league and how you can do it. And yeah, I, I want a piece of that. But uh, I, I guess I want I want to hear it from your mouth, man. You have high expectations. You said the term Super Bowl or bust, and I don't know if you truly believe that like a Dan Shorty does. But you also have on your show recently said that you feel like the Bears are about a, a nine or ten win team. So can you kind of explain exactly what you mean and then cap that all off with the division? Because that's going to be something I want to talk about, but I want to, again, hear it from you first. Well, so isn't it crazy, Carl? Like I was at, uh, I was at my good friend's house. I asked him for a season prediction. He goes 11 wins, but we missed the playoffs. And he starts laughing and I'm just like, wouldn't be the, da wouldn't that be the damnest thing? And then yet here we are taking steps forward having success we're four and two but we're fourth in the division like i kind of said this during the off season when i was making my predictions for what i want to happen some of these teams have to suck and and it was supposed to be the vikings and here they are five and oh so yeah i i do have this as a nine ten win team and i think there is different scenarios and different paths you can take to get to nine or 10 wins. And with some, I'd be satisfied with others. I wouldn't. That's why this whole year has kind of fallen on a, a big eye test for me, because like I said, I'll appreciate the steps along the way. And I'm not just a meathead. It's not super bowl or bust every year. However, there's always a chance there is teams have gotten lucky. And I've talked about, you need three things for any team to win a Super Bowl. You need to be healthy. You need to be talented. And you need to be lucky. It's like whether you want to admit it or not, every team that wins a Super Bowl has had luck in their favor, right? I would and say so, the luck is the most important thing. No, like how lucky do the Chiefs get? Like, so, so it, it's a ask the refs. Okay, but it's a balance there. Carl, there is a balance. And so I understand we could get very lucky, especially as a defensive led team, because those are the ones that spike the most and show up for one year and then don't show up consistently. Offensive led teams tend to make the playoffs year after year after year after year. Um, yeah, I, I want, I want that talent part of it to be the reason why, we're competitive and why we're a good team. And, and I don't want to rely so much on luck like we have in the past, whenever we've seen any kind of success from this team. So for me, talent and health are number one and number two. And then I want, yeah, the refs to call some things our way a little bit. There's so much that needs to be unpacked there. So my comment regarding luck about being the most important thing, I think it is the most important thing. But that's outside of your control. You cannot control that. So you have to control the talent. And again, injuries could also be considered luck at the same time. Um, God, there's so much you said I wanted to divulge into. Um, yeah, it's a good you topic. I told the, you, we could, the, we could the talk offensive... about the title of the show all night. We really could. Yeah, we're, we're, I, I want to hammer this out. We're going to get something definitive out of you, whether you like it or not, before this is over, as far as expectations. 
Um, but there was this amazing graph, and I'm not going to try and dig it and dig to find it because it's going to be too hard. Someone put this amazing piece of um, data out on Twitter. It was essentially Super Bowl winning quarterbacks, and the there was a specific metric on defense that um, they ranked with it, and the Tom Brady teams that had won Super Bowls, no surprise, they had top ten defenses at the at the end. And a lot of quarterbacks who have won Super Bowls have also had top five or quite simply the best defense paired with them. So you're right. You need talent to win a Super Bowl. The offensive teams get you there. I still think that the old term defense wins championships, even to, in today's offensive centric NFL, that you, you need defense. Um, but Patrick Mahomes, he, if you want to talk about talent, he's obviously the most talented quarterback in the NFL right now. Um, I just wanted to say that he has gone to Super Bowls with th- not the worst offensive line in the NFL, but the offensive line that he played behind that lost to the Buccaneers, that was a bad offensive line. And they told you it was a bad offensive line because the next year it was essentially brand new. And the Super Bowl he just won against the Kansas City Chiefs, if Justin Fields would have had that receiving core, Justin Fields would have gotten kicked out of the NFL. That is a terrible group of wide receivers in my opinion, and Mahomes won a Super Bowl with them. The only team to win a Super Bowl and then in the next offseason move on from their starting quarterback. That feels like a Trent Dilfer Baltimore Ravens situation. That is Trent Dilfer Baltimore Ravens. You know what you know what it takes to make that move? A real I mean, good coach. A real good talent of, a real good talent evaluator and somebody who knows what they're seeing and believes in it. You look at the 49ers, Trey Lance, you moved up to get this kid. Yeah. And, and, and the, like, Bears, and like, so, the Bears would have stuck with Trey Lance until the bitter end. They correct, were able just, to identify Purdy and they said, fuck it, cut our ties. We're in the Super Bowl window and they did the best for them now and they've made the correct move. So like I brought this question up, like what kind of success would Justin Fields have had to had? have for you to not take Caleb Williams. And I got oh to the God. result where like, I don't know, man, even if he got to the Super Bowl, I know what I'm seeing. You know what I mean? And, and so like a lot of people are critiquing Mike Tomlin now for making the move. And I'm kind of like, well, you know what? I, I kind of get it because there's a lot of room for improvement there. Fields is miles away from doing the things that Caleb is doing right now. Are you kidding me? Reading blitzes, walking up to the line, letting guys know who's coming, and oh it being God. correct? We haven't seen that from Fields or from Trubisky. I don't know if there was any sort of so, that beforehand, too. Like, oh, my God, it's night. So we're going to rely on nothing but the guy's athleticism to get us there. And, and, and like, it's possible – you can do it. Dude, I'll bring up so many different situations. I'll tell you right now. Um, Doug Peterson with Nick Foles. Nick Foles was a – you talked about injuries. Like, yeah, they got injured and still at the quarterback position and still won one. And their backup quarterback wound up being Super Bowl MVP. And three years later, he was third string on the Bears. And three years later, Doug Peterson was fired from the Eagles. <laughs> You won a Super Bowl three years ago. It's on your resume. That's great. It took Andy Reid 20 years to win a Super Bowl. And it wasn't until he got Patrick Mahomes that he won one. He's been a damn better coach than Doug Peterson's ever been his whole career. So that resume is nice. They got more lucky than Andy Reid had gotten in the past. That's why I said it's it's possible And we could sit there and do that. But when it comes to my expectations for my football team, I want dominance and I want dominance by talent, like by, by purpose, by plan. I don't want to sit here and and win games. Luckily, I want to sit here and have other teams be afraid of us. We talked, you talked about Super Bowl winning quarterbacks, dude. Can you name me the quarterbacks in this league right now that have a ring? Uh, I could try. I, Let's do it. Um, Mr. Mr. PJ has gotten aggressive about this too. He didn't like the number one overall selection. He, of course, wanted the Hall. 
which by the way which Caleb would have been Williams the wrong hall. move this time the hall was last year when we got dj moore and another number one pick we, that we, we already acquired the, the hall yeah we, we already acquired the hall correct um super bowl winning quarterbacks in the nfl include mahomes and mahomes has three St- stafford has won a super bowl at the end Joe of his Burrow career has now, not right? I I can't believe that Joe Burrow has not. Josh really? Allen, same well, hold thing. on. This is Lamar, important. Though. Same thing. This is important. Stafford is towards the end of his career, right? Okay, so who else has a ring in this league? Not Lamar. Currently, not Burrow. Ro- Rogers has one ring. At the end of his career. Now, right? So you did a good job of pointing out Mr. Uh, Nick Foles, who's no longer in the NFL, so he's not an option anymore. Last year he Falcons, was. Falcons have not won the Super Bowl. We're going back. Obviously, Tom Brady is gone, so you lose a bunch there between the Patriots and the Bucks. Yeah, it's it's slim. Joe Pickens, Flacco. Right? Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco has won one. There you go. Russell he was Wilson. instrumental in that run as well. Russell there you Wilson. go. There's two, right? And who I else? Think? We're already getting thin, dude, man. Dude, it's the entire league against Patrick Mahomes right now. These dinosaurs have a ring from back in the day. Nobody's been able to beat this damn kid. Like, and if if they did, it was Cincinnati and Joe Burrow and Matt Stafford capitalized on that. Not the Bengals. They won their Super Bowl in the AFC Championship, and it's funny because somebody finally knocked the Kansas City Chiefs out, and then an NFC team wins it. But man, it's tough. It's the reason why the Rams gambled so much and went all in to sit there and and put one shot at it. To go out and get a ring. It's the same reason why the 49ers did the same thing. They tried to do it with a quarterback with Trey Lance. They did it with Christian McCaffrey, too. They traded so much draft capital, put so many of the chips into the middle to go out and beat Patrick Mahomes. The Bears. We're not doing that. We're not doing that this year. So, like, I, I listen, my expectations and satisfaction do come from Super Bowl or bust, but I'm realistic here. I know where we stand. What we got to do is beat the Packers twice. Like, if we want to add a defensive end right now at the trade deadline, it's not going to be Micah Parsons. It's not going to be Miles Garrett. That's for the Lions to go after because they've shown they're an inch away from potentially making it. It's step by step. It's progression. It does take a little bit of time. God damn, are we on the right path, though, which is what makes me excited. And so, like you said, I predicted this team 9-8. and eight. I predicted them 3-3 three and three going into the bye week, and they've stolen a win already. So they're already 4-2. and two. So if I had to adjust my prediction, I'd have to say I now have this team at 10-7. and seven. But to me, um, you know, for continued success, you're going to need talent. You're going to need a damn good quarterback and you're going to need a damn good coaching staff too i tried to dig through your super bowl winning quarterback comments outside of um the opponents to tom brady and peyton sorry i just gave the answer away the opponents to tom Tom brady and patrick mahomes in the last 10 years the only other quarterback who has made it and not included those two players was peyton manning when the denver broncos beat the uh carolina panthers and that was 10 years ago, nine years ago. Yeah, dude, it's so, rough. That's why people don't understand. We're all in the same boat. Yeah, like, as far as far as your team building comment, what I wanted to say on that and with the way the Bears doing it correctly this time, you, you, you could have taken the haul again, right? You could have built this 49ers-esque roster that has, I don't know, five caliber starting defensive tackles and four caliber defensive ends and have this insane wave of, defensive linemen oh and you also have the entire all pro offensive line that's fine and dandy but if you don't have the quarterback to take advantage of the talent that's already on the roster you're not going to inject shit so for the bears to get caleb williams it regardless of caleb williams or not i think that the bears are smart to let go of fields and acquire a talented rookie on a four-year deal because that's the window at, in the, at the very least right but now caleb williams you're seeing i'll, I'll make the comment now I think that through six games in the NFL, Caleb Williams has already cemented himself as a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. And as far as a trajectory, the arrow is literally pointing directly upwards. He's only ascending each and every single week from any metric that you look. And the idea of how good he'll be 
in week six of his sixth year in the NFL is is truly terrifying. He's going to be so much better in such a short period amount of time and only continue to get better. Um, let's address the offseason criticism of him. He does still paint his nails, right? I guess that sucks. That's the criticism I, I that we have to go to immediately, right? if he loses a Super Bowl or an NFC championship, he might cry or some shit. Come on, guys. Like, that that was the problem with this kid because you couldn't find any other that's, damn problems. That... Like, my expectations are Super Bowl or bust. And there's ways you can get to a Super Bowl. And, and when one, like like I said, you could have a really good defense. We saw it in 06. We saw two out of the three phases of football winning winning really, really well in their areas, right? Special teams and defense. And the offense was able to at least put out a running game. But I'll tell you right now, I believe what, it was What the, are you talking about right now? What what time frame? Are you talking about 06? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. So, 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 like, so, like, you could still, you know, get to one potentially win one just winning two out of the three phases um thai 2010 chargers they had the number one offense and the number one defense they missed the playoffs they went nine and seven because they had the 32nd special teams in the league okay so the number one offense and the number one defense wasn't enough to sit there and make up for the lack of the third phase of the football team when you're giving up punt returns or kick returns for touchdowns, when you're missing field goals left and right, when, you know what I mean? It's just, it is a team game. So there is a balance to it. Um, Right now we are very defensive heavy. And I expected to lean on the defense early on in the season. And the schedule is so beneficial for us, to, for us to be able to gel as an offense to get ready for these right uh, divisional games at the end of the season. And I just Imagine felt that that has happened faster than I expected it to. I do have very high expectations for my football team. I you want, should. yes, you should, as you should like, and to me, it's not about instant success. Like I know there's been a lot of conversation about Jaden Daniels versus Caleb Williams. I don't care, man. Let them have it. Like I'm seeing what I want out of our guy. I'm seeing the growth, yeah. the success, the success uh, right now after the picks have been made. The success of Jaden Daniels has nothing to do with Caleb Williams. Just like Justin Fields, that ship has sailed. The only sane thing to do regarding Justin Fields is root for him to play so that the Bears get the fourth round pick instead of the sixth. Pretty if you want to root, if you want to root for Jaden Daniels, go ahead. Do I like him? No, I thought that he was made by his incredible LSU wide receivers. Totally, completely different argument. But if you want to root for him, who cares? Him doing good or bad, aside from the game that we're going to see here in a couple weeks, has nothing to do with Caleb Williams at all. Correct. But So that's why I focus just on what we have. And yeah, man, I don't know. Caleb Williams is super impressive to me. He really is. Uh I'm seeing a lot of next level stuff. Like, like I said, this year was going to be all about the eye test for me. Not so much about the record. It, it's all about the eye test and the statements you make. So one of the things I think we need to do is beat the Packers twice because we're sitting here preaching let's change. Rope, let's, let's rope this Packers comment into your expectations. Cause I believe you said that your expectation is to beat the Packers twice. It is. That was my prediction i predicted them to go nine and eight but four and two in the division uh split the vikings split the lions and sweep the packers split the vikings yes okay because i didn't think they were going to go five and one like I, now i i would be able to understand your expectation of four and two in the division a lot more if before any football was played this season you said the Bears would sweep the Vikings and split the Lions and Packers. As far as an expectation, I don't think that's the right term. And that's what I, I wanted to talk to you about is your expectation is not the Super Bowl, but you expect good product from the Bears, and especially in the division four and two. But you're predicting nine and eight, eight, nine wins. I don't see where that's lining up. So like I said, we did a whole show where we went through the whole schedule and everything like that. So I have it on there. And like right now I expected them to be three and three 
I told you they snuck out a game. So if I was to adjust my prediction, right now I'd have to adjust it to 10 and 8. But um yeah, I just I just think that if we're going to sit here and preach change, I need to actually see it. Like, why don't you actually go out there and do it? Historically, we've matched up well about, with the Vikings. We've matched up well with the Lions. It's the Packers that are our problem. And so that, for me, that says a lot. Even if I feel that this team overall is still not where it needs to be, I, I felt it was set up in a way for Caleb to be able to progress. Um, but I feel I, I told you th there's a nine and eight prediction. And there's multiple ways to get to it. Some ways that I'm upset with and some ways that I'm happy with. So when I gave my prediction, I gave the best possible road to that nine and eight record that I could. And that was still with sweeping the Packers twice. Is it fair, Paulski, to say that you're ever so slightly not confusing, but interchanging the word expectation with preference and desire because if you told me your desire was to sweep the packers and still go nine and eight fuck yeah give that to me i want that but as far as an expectation and overarching expectations for the bears i don't think that there should have been any expectations for the bears if the bears drafted ninth again because the division was strong and they had a rookie quarterback trying to hammer some stuff out that's fine it sucks right because I know a certain co-host of a certain Bears Country podcast that predicted the Bears to win the Super Bowl. We did a prediction. I can throw it up on the screen. I think I had the Bears getting at least 10 wins and going to the playoffs. But as far as an expectation, this year, there should be no expectations for what I think. So most of what I value in my expectations is not statistical. It is more eye test. That's why I'm really happy with seeing Caleb command the offense. And, and, and it, to me, it's not about the overall record this year um, because I do think this is a stepping stone year, right? So for you to say there's no expectations, well, that's not right. If they get three wins, you're not going to be happy. But you can't say my expectations are to secure a top five draft pick. That's asinine. What I'm saying is... Oh, dude, I don't want it, the top five draft let, pick. I want the 32nd No, absolutely. Pick. No, I know. That's, that's the one that's I want. You, you're like you're if I, trying if to I work the wrong way here. If, if I expected a three-win season, again, I said that'd be asinine. But I don't think that it would is, it, it, it's fair. It's a different story because we know what Caleb is. But it, it's not fair to have the expectation before the Titans game and say... The Bears need to win the division. I expect the Bears to win the division. That is not fair, in my opinion. Next year, I, once we have seen what we have as far as a quarterback, because I already told you what I feel about it, because we know, we know, in my opinion, that Caleb Williams has secured himself through six games as a top ten quarterback in the NFL. He's that goddamn good. Well, and I, I expect. Of, what do you not? You don't want to hurt his feelings? Like, listen, we just talked about C.J. Stroud. They were in the same spot as we were. It does not take that long to flip things around, especially if you're at least an average roster, which we've now gotten to a point where we were. Like Ryan Poles preached this whole patience thing so he could really truly overturn this thing from the core. And we've done that. We've let it happen. And, dude, if you have a quarterback that makes a difference – like that's why that's why even this year could be a a year, man. Because it, it's yeah. And once the window's wrong. open, it's open. And once it's no, open, it's open. I just didn't you, think it'd you be cannot, open yet. You cannot I wanted take to see anything the signs. as far as. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see the signs that are going to make me feel good about it being open for the next three years. However, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, so I'm actually impressed. Going, hey, uh, this team could put itself in a position to, to actually make a little run here. I, I didn't have expectations for the Bears this year. Um, but next year, after Caleb Williams has already shown me that he's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. But there's your expectation. After the Bears but have there's your expectation. going into next year. My expectation year. is that Caleb needs to show me he's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL so that next year I can expect this. You just said it. 
Thank you, Cliff. I appreciate that. So, I don't know. I, I think it. we're kind of trying to to slice a piece of hair in half. We're, we're, we're grasping at straws. We are. Um, we are. And it's because, it's because we're talking about the difference between statistics and eye test. So what I'm telling you is like the win-loss total doesn't really matter for me so much. It's more of the statement and the eye test. And like the only two – like I mean I don't, I'm not saying I would be satisfied if we went – two and 15 here but like those two packer games to me matter a lot just due to the statement and and the dude i need to see this thing turning a page you see what i'm saying and like i'm i'm not expecting to win a super bowl this year so like the fuck do i care if we have nine wins or ten wins or whatever if we make the playoffs hey man every year is a shot right we could get lucky. We could do it. That's great. I would love it. But my expectations are to see the quarterback progress, which he's doing, and to see this, to see us start to take control of this division. And that runs through the Packers, the team that we can't beat. So that's why I set my expectations there because the way I look at it, like you looked at it from a, a, a negative point of view, I look at it from a positive point of view. For me to be happy, for me to be satisfied. Fuck it, man. Beat the Packers two times. If you come out with nine wins at the end of the year, but you beat the Packers two times, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good going into next year. I don't know if that makes sense or not. I think it does. And I, I obviously can't talk you off of this point, right? Again, I for, for my oh, money. Oh, you might. I, my mind's I, think, I think that your word expectation, specifically to the point of beating the Packers twice, you should use the word desire in my opinion. Because that's the vibe I'm getting from it, and that's what I'm thinking. But as far as a true expectation, going into this year, I did not expect the Bears to win the Super Bowl. I did not expect the Bears to win the division nor go to the playoffs. No, my desire. I expected them to not. I expected them to have a better draft position than last year, in the sense that they shouldn't be drafting ninth overall again. They have improved. They should not be drafting ninth overall. But next year is when we can talk about expectations. I think the playoffs are an expectation for the Bears next year. And every year that Caleb Williams is the quarterback of the Chicago Bears. But this year, I've got no expectations other than improving from last year. Well, my desire is to have Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes. My expectation I've got a surprise to have for a you. guy is to have a guy that's at least able to do it once on his own 